Catesby Commemorative Trust is a foundation that promotes the work of a pioneering naturalist named Mark Catesby. The collaboration between the trust and educational entities works to support a vision to inspire respect for early naturalist explorers and conservation of their work, as well as the plants, animals, and habitat they studied. The development of a science mini-unit focused on project-based learning is one example that ensures active engagement so with the myriad That's resources created by Mark Catesby. Around that particular bird. And, and if I can draw that thing, that's going to bring some meaning to, hey, these are the birds that, we saw, that I saw that when I was in the New World, and here's the kind of habitat. In 1712, English naturalist and scientist Mark Catesby ventured from England to the Americas. After a seven-year stay in Virginia, he returned to England with sketches and paintings of plants and animals he had observed. The paintings and descriptions of the flora and fauna impressed other naturalists so much that in 1722, several fellows of the Royal Society sponsored his return to North America and continue his work. There, Catesby cataloged the flora and fauna of the Carolinas and the Bahamas by gathering seeds and specimens, compiling notes, and making water color sketches. The seven-day format of the PBL is needed so that the students can simulate being a scientist and naturalist and apply the concepts of physical features of birds to habitat characteristics and survival. Students were asked to prepare for taking a journey back in time and act as scientists to collect data and explore the different flora and fauna of America. Project-based learning and problem-based learning are similar pedagogical processes used to promote student-centered development of knowledge and ideas. The purpose of PBL is to have students solve problems or design a solution to a question or challenge. When the question is content-specific and focused, many researchers call the process problem-based learning. When the question is broad, open-ended, and integrated with different content areas, the process becomes project-based. The authentic question allows students to start a process of inquiry in which they use cognitive tools and exploratory learning to find a solution. The end product can be an answer that is justified with data or argumentation, an artifact constructed to solve a problem, or a procedure that can be used in other applications. A collaboration among the Catesby Commemorative Trust, the College of Charleston, and the Charleston County School District was formed to develop a project-based mini-unit lasting seven days to highlight the amazing work of Mark Catesby. During days one and two, students recreate and draw a bird using Mark Catesby's description and sketches. They determine through observation the characteristics of what makes one bird different from another. Students create a notebook to record all of their work and organize their data from activities simulating a journey that Mark Catesby took as a naturalist. On to you know, Catesby's taking a look at all these different birds because that's kind of his favorite animal to be describing and to be drawing. And we want to find out, hey, how do the birds' beaks, how do the birds' beaks adapt to their food, or how do the birds adapt to their food by which beak they have? And you're going to be going from station to station to station, taking a look at some food that the bird could be eating, and the food that the bird can be eating is going to be placed in your bowl. So I've got bowls full of food, and then I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a, a paper here in just a minute. But when you go to a station, you're going to see that you have three different, look at this, beaks, three different beaks. The beaks that I have here are a pair of tongs, and I'm going to put all the tools up on the board here. We got a pair of tongs. Tongs are kind of day three provides the students with an opportunity to simulate how birds with different beaks forage and gather food. 
In this competition, students use tools to collect different types of food. Data are collected, organized, and analyzed to determine which beak is best for gathering a certain food type. This part of the mini unit allows students to actively collect data and reach conclusions. The discovery learning promotes motivation and active engagement. What's your prediction is? Uh, chopsticks, right? We all Chops predict chopsticks. chopsticks. And what are you getting out of your bowl? Heavy uh, The heavy string. All right. So who, I'll go first. Yeah, you go first. You've got to like push it down in there so that it'll adjust it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because we don't have to use it. Yeah. Like, like, well, it's like, like, I like it. ELA integration can also be used to improve reading and comprehension skills using science as the context. In this particular case, a passage about heat transfer in toucan beaks was used to improve reading comprehension. Like hawks and owls, they have sharp, curved bills for tearing meat. In our example, we can use a fishing hawk. Traditional pedagogy using lecture and note-taking reinforce the concepts of the type of beaks that are matched with specific birds that Mark Catesby sketched. <laughs> Alien, bird, and habitat creation reinforced the symbiotic relationship among organisms in nature. They all go on 28. You make it like a flip chart on top of your notes. Uh, the Ukumanu is originally originated from Hawaii, which is why it, where it got its name, Ukumanu, which equals small bird. It is a somewhat distant relative of the hummingbird. It is three to four inches in height. Its weight is 0 0.85 ounces average. Width is three to inches to three and a half inches in width. And its small feet can get on small branches. And what does it eat? Usually small seeds and small um, fruit, like blueberries, which is why it lives near bushes or in bushes like that, so it has an easy access to food. Mm -hmm. Can you show me your bird? These are the concepts for my bird. Pretty small bird. Mm -hmm. Days four and five extend the concept of adaptations of birds for survival to a specific habitat. In groups, students use their creativity to develop an alien bird with any physical characteristics they choose. They then construct or draw a habitat that would sustain this alien bird. In their science notebooks, students must describe the characteristics of the habitats and birds that allow them to survive and reproduce. They must also justify through argumentative writing why the bird would survive in a particular habitat. Birds then migrate to another group's habitat. Each group must develop an argumentative narrative why the migrated alien bird will survive or not survive in the new habitat. Mark Catesby was the first person to argue for the concept of migration, having seen the bobo lynx follow the availability of food from the Carolinas to Cuba. Development of the alien birds in habitats promotes autonomy, responsibility, and creativity. A fishing hawk, or osprey is our example. On day six, students' habitats are exposed to a natural catastrophe in which their habitat is destroyed, leaving a particular food source. Students are forced to use only one tool to simulate if their bird would survive in the devastated environment with a particular food source. So how did you, did you like doing the project? I 
Yeah. I like doing a project. I think in science, um, I like either doing experiments or projects because I think I'm, I think like visual work is like helping understand what we're doing better. Oh, Casey. Uh, Mark Casey. I feel like he is like awesome because why? Because. He has made this whole book about birds, and it has been an interesting, you know, journey, you know, finding and looking and, you know, getting interested in birds. They all love. Some birds have different feet too, and they eat different Some birds. Because if all birds, if all birds eat the same thing, uh, none of them will get, will get enough food, so they'll probably die. Did you have fun doing this, yeah. these activities, yeah. the past the past two weeks? Mm -hmm. yeah. It was actually fun. Yeah. So why was it fun? Because uh, we get to we get bake, to learn about we get bake, uh, right. make our bake own. the bird, the lid, the turtle, all that. So we can know about what bird's habitat is. Finally, on day seven, students read original letters written by Mark Catesby and completed a set of document-based questions to understand how a scientist from the 18th century cataloged and explained his work. Being a naturalist, who knows what a naturalist is? Who knows what a naturalist is? Kate. Good, a person who studies plants and animals, a person who's studying nature. So, Mark Catesby is a naturalist and he's studying plants and animals and I gave you a term the other day for plants and animals that's primarily used by scientists and primarily used by naturalists. What do we call plants and animals in a scientific kind of manner? Sebega? Flora and fauna. What is it, class? Flora and fauna. Good. So flora, what part of what part of what a naturalist studies is flora? Annie? That's like um, the plants. The plants. What is it, class? Plants. Plants. The project-based learning mini-unit in science was successfully implemented in different sixth grade classrooms and reflects both state and national performance-based science standards. The integrated mini-unit utilized concepts from science, processes and art, writing and reading skills from language arts, and perspectives from social studies. Students were able to identify and connect the concepts of physical characteristics of birds to habitats and the means for survival. By using the PBL process, students are more likely to remember concepts and knowledge discovered on their own and apply that knowledge to authentic situations in the future.